Okay, so for this video, and discussion natin would be about contra accounts and adjunct accounts. Okay, so di ba meron tayong mga account classifications? Yung tinatawag nating accounting elements. We have assets, liabilities, saka equity. So under ng assets, di ba meron tayong cash, accounts receivable, inventory, supplies, PPE, yung mga yan. And then, under ng liabilities, we have accounts payable, notes payable, loans payable, mortgage payable, and so many others. And then, sa equity, we have capital and drawing. May income summary pa. Uh, on a separate video natin siya i-discuss at length, okay? And then, meron tayong income and expense accounts, right? We have um, rental income or repair income, sales or ticket fees, ticket sales, or tuition fees, or depende sa business. And then we have expenses, salaries, utilities, transportation, representation, uh, all those expenses, okay? Aside from those things na usually na-discuss na natin, meron tayong tinatawag na contra account saka adjunct account, okay? So, pakita ko sa inyo using the chart of accounts kung ano nga ba tong contra accounts and adjunct accounts na to. Okay, so contra asset accounts tayo. Okay, so meron tayong contra account, tapos pwede mo siyang uh, iri under niya, pwede siyang tawagin contra asset, tapos pwede rin contra capital account. Okay, so example na ibibigay natin, kaunahan is in relation to accounts receivable. Okay, di ba ang accounts receivable, kunwari may customers ng utang sila, so, may collectibles ang company from those customers. Yun yung accounts receivable natin. Kaso, di ba merong chances na itong mga customers is hindi makabayad ng maayos. Okay? Meron pa ang instances na hindi na talaga nagbabayad yung customer. So, in that regard, kailangan mag-set up ang company ng tinatawag nating allowance for and collectible accounts or allowance for bad debts. Okay? Kasi hindi naman uh, fair na i-reflect natin yung buong account dito. Kunwari, 100,000. Pero yung isang customer is, let's say, na bankrupt na siya, or namatay na, or lumayas na kung saan, hindi na nagpakita, tinakbuhan na yung business. So, yun. Uh, hindi fair na i-reflect pa rin natin siya dito when we are almost sure na hindi na natin siya makokollect from that person. So, in that case, kailangan natin mag-set up ng contra asset account, yung allowance for doubtful accounts. Okay? Type ko lang dito, allowance for doubtful accounts or uncollectible accounts. Other terms niya, uh, ADA, allowance for doubtful accounts, allowance for uncollectible accounts, or allowance for bad debts. Okay? Pa same lang yon other terms lang. Okay? Contra asset siya kasi di ba yung accounts receivable as asset, ang normal balance niya is debit. Pero itong allowance for doubtful accounts, ito yung kabawasan kasi nga uh, parang nagpo-provide ka ng allowance para dun sa mga customer na uh, hindi ka sure kung magbabayad pa or hindi na. Okay? Medyo allowance pa rin siya in the sense na there's still a possibility na maybe makapagbayad pa sila, okay? Pero for those instances na talagang sure na sure ka na na hindi na makakabayad yung customer, let's say in case of that, eh di, in that case, pwedeng i-cancel mo na yung accounts receivable mismo, i-recognize mo na lang siya na loss ng company. Kasi sure ka na hindi ka mababayaran eh. Pero kung hindi ka pa sure, doubtful ka pa lang na there's a possibility na magbayad pa rin siya there's a possibility na hindi. So, mag-set up ka lang muna ng allowance for doubtful accounts. Okay? We will make a separate video for allowance for doubtful accounts kasi merong mga methods pa rin siya, uh, presentations, ganyan. Okay? Separate video na yun. Okay? For now, ang discussion lang natin ay contra accounts at adjunct accounts. Okay? So, ito yung una nating um, contra account. Another... Uh, contra account natin would be the accumulated depreciation. Okay? Uh, ginagamit lang to for PPE, fixed assets or non-current assets. Okay? Accumulated depreciation. Diba, um, 
ang PPE kasi, uh, ito yung mga gamit ng company na matagal pwedeng gamitin, let's say computer. So, hindi lang siya pag gagamitin for one year, pwede siyang gamitin for more than one year, let's say three years, five years, okay? So, in that case, nagre-recognize ang company ng depreciation. Kumbaga, pag nagamit mo siya for one year, as if may nagastas ka sa kanya for that particular year, okay? Hindi kasi fair na yung kabo ang pinambili mo ng isang property, let's say laptop, 30,000, is a eh, expense mo siya ng buo during the first year. Eh, pwede mo naman siyang gamitin sa kasunod pa na taon, two or three more years, di ba? So, hindi fair na i-expense mo siya lahat during that year na binili mo siya. So, yung cost niya, i-allocate mo siya uh, para dun sa mga taon na pwede mo pa siyang magamit. And in that sense, uh, nagre-recognize ang business na depreciation expense. Tapos, di ba yung Itong accounts na to, tools, furnitures, and fixtures, office equipment, saka repairs. Yung cost kasi na kung magkano binili yung property, yun yung mag-appear dito sa accounts na to. And then, para dun sa depreciation nila, ayan, kailangan siyang i-lodge dito sa uh, accumulated depreciation na account. Okay, so depende kung ilan yung PPE accounts ng business. So, pwede mo siyang gawan bawat uh, account. Okay? So, you have tools. So, magkakaroon ka accumulated depreciation for tools. You have furnitures and fixtures. So, you have accumulated depreciation for uh, furnitures and fixtures. And then, you have your office equipment. Pwede magkakaroon ka din ng uh, accumulated depreciation for office equipment. Ayan. And then lastly, we have repair equipment. So, kailangan meron din siyang contra asset account accumulated depreciation for repair equipment. Okay, so presentation mo yan sa financial statements mo. Edi yung cost mo is andito sa main asset account. Ito yung asset account talaga niya, di ba? And then yung contra asset account niya would be the accumulated depreciation accounts. Pambawa siya, okay? Panwari yung um, office equipment, laptop. 30,000 mo siya binili, gagamitin mo siya for 3 years. So, lumalabas 10,000 per year ang kanyang depreciation. So, for the first year, at the end of the year, December 31, so yung depreciation expense niya, meron kang expense account, debit depreciation expense. Tapos ang credit mo ay itong... Uh, contra asset account natin. Ito ang accumulated depreciation. Okay? Hindi mo siya ibabawas diretso sa furnitures and fixtures or sa office equipment or sa repair equipment. Ang gagamitin mo ay yung accumulated depreciation na account. Okay? So, yan. This is the second type ng ating contra account. And then, um, owner's equity. Di ba we have capital? Kapag nag-invest yung owner sa business, Nare-record natin siya sa capital. Pero kapag siya yung nag-withdraw, let's say kumuha siya ng cash from the business, ginamit niya sa pansarili niya, nire-record natin siya sa tutor drawing. Okay? Yung tutor drawing, it's actually a contra capital account. Contra account din siya, di ba? Kasi kabawasan siya nung capital nung business owner. Okay? Okay. Um, cutting segue. Um, kapag consider lang na temporary yung pag ni owner. Let's say, ay, humiram lang ng 5,000. Ipahiram mo lang ng 5,000 today, ibabalik ko din uh, next week. Okay? In that case, nare-record siya sa drawing account. Okay? Kasi temporary lang yung pag withdraw Kasi ibabalik din. Merong intention to return yung withdraw niya. Okay? But, if itong si owner, sigurado siya na withdrawal talaga ng capital. Ano, hindi, walang intention na ibabalik din agad or kung ano man. So, in that case, uh, it's acceptable na idiretsyo na siyang ibawa sa capital account. Okay? Kaya hindi na kailangang idaan dun sa withdrawal account kasi sure naman na siyang withdrawal talaga and wala siyang intention na ibalik. Okay? Or punan later on. Okay? So, yun. That's uh, another contra account. So, contra account kasi nga, 
opposite siya ng normal balance and normally ay pang bawas siya dun sa main account. So, we have again, accounts receivable, tapos para dun sa mga hindi ka sure kung magbabayad pa or hindi, you set up the allowance for doubtful accounts, which is kabawasan dun sa accounts receivable. And then we have yung mga PPE natin, uh, property plant and equipment, ayan, tapos contra asset account nila is yung accumulated depreciation. Kasi ginagamit, uh, during the years na ginagamit sila, so yun, nababawasan yung kanilang value kasi nagagamit sila. Okay, and then itong drawing capital, kabawasan sa puhunan or capital loan may are So, contra equity account siya, contra account din. Okay, and then we have yung kabaliktaran ng contra account, yung tinatawag natin na adjunct account, which is nakakadagdag naman siya ng value. Okay, uh, for now, siguro ang i-share uh, ko sa inyo na type ng adjunct account would be yung freight in or transportation in, kunwari, bumili ka ng uh, inventory na ibebenta mo, okay? So, bumili ka ng inventory, papasok sa business mo, di ba? Let's say, meron siyang kaakibat na delivery expense, okay? Transportation, kasi from the buy, uh, sorry, from the seller, kung saan mo siya binili, dadalhin sa'yo yung products. So, syempre, di ba, uh, either may kaakibat siya na transportation cost, Okay? Kapag ikaw yung bibili, transportation in ang tawag, or freight in. Okay, that's another term for transportation, freight in. Yung freight in or transportation in, pwede mo siyang idagdag dun sa cost ng iyong products or inventory. Okay? So, pwede mo siyang idagdag. Kasi kung baga, uh, before ka mag-markup ng profit, or ano rin, di ba? Cost nung isang product is 100 pesos. Tapos, dun sa pag-transport, papasok sa business mo, let's say, um, per unit, kunwari, dinistribute mo na, no? Total transportation cost, 10,000. Tapos, 10,000 units yung binili mo, ay di piso kada unit. Ngayon, yung per unit, let's say, ang cost niya, yung product is 100, plus yung piso na share niya dun sa transportation cost. So, ang total cost mo talaga dun is 100 one. Okay? So, a jump account in such that dumadagdag dun sa cost or sa value or dun sa financial uh, monetary figure. Financial value or monetary value, no? Uh, isang account. Okay? So, you have your purchases, binili mo na products or inventory, tapos iladagdag mo yung uh, cost ng transportation. Okay? So, that's an adjunct account. And then, another type ng adjunct account is yung uh, bond premium na tinatawag, pero ang bonds kasi medyo higher accounting, financial accounting na siya, dinidiscuss. Pero, ayan, banggitin ko lang. Bond premium para sa bond liability. So, that's a liability account naman. Tapos, kumbaga, um, ano ba bang nature niya? Nangutang ka, pero...